Okay, uh, uh, welcome back. We are going to do a mirror uh, demonstration now. I'm going to talk a little bit at the beginning about uh, the difference between concave mirrors and convex mirrors and go a little bit into the theory of that and then I'll illustrate it. With you. And then we go into the theory of this. We learn that if an object is uh, away from the center, outside of the center, then it will form an image. You do the ray diagrams of this. roughly will look like this. It will form a, an image here. So it forms a, we call this a real inverted and diminished image. Real, because the light waves actually meet there. Inverted and diminished. Because it's smaller than the actual object. What happens when the object is exactly at the center? Then you do the ray diagramming. You go straight, you go down, you go through the focal point, you go like this. And if you do this good, you'll see that it will form an image exactly at the same location where it was found. It'll be real, it'll be inverted, but it won't be diminished. It'll be exactly the same size. Okay. Uh, then you can go inside of the uh, center, so somewhere between the center and the focal point, okay, and what's going to end up happening is that uh, the image should be, if I did it right again, the image is going to end up being outside of the center and it'll be like this somewhere. So now the image is also real inverted, but it is enlarged. The image is bigger than you. Okay, so it's called real inverted enlarged. The next option that's left is being at the focal point and being on the other side of the focal point. Okay? Well, let me do this now. Let me show you what happens when I'm inside of the focal point, and then I'll show you what happens to the focal point, and then we'll actually demo it. So come over here. If we are at the If we're inside the focal point, we go over here and we go through, we go down, hit the center, we go like this. What we notice is that these two rays do not converge, but they will be seeming to be diverging from a point back here. So if we go So this is a virtual image. This is sort of the same kind of image that you have in a plane mirror, the ones that you use at home. You look at yourself, but now it's an enlarged version of you. So it's gonna be a, a, a virtual, enlarged, it's quite bigger than you, and virtual enlarged, and it would be upright. So this time you actually see your, the image of yourself upright. So now notice what happened. When we went from the, between the center and the focal point, we got an enlarged image back here, but it was real image. But when we went to here, now it became a virtual image. So what's gonna happen exactly at the turning, the turnaround point, the focal point is the turnaround point. We 
expect something dramatic to happen, right? Between here, you went from a real image to a virtual image. Well, the rays will come. They will end up being parallel, right? When you do the ray diagram. That means there's never a point back there that they seem to be diverging from. They're parallel. So you have no image. No image is formed. No image is formed on the real side. No image is formed in the uh, virtual side. So you would say no image. What's the use of that? Well, the use of that is that could be a great way of finding the focal point. You get any kind of a curved mirror, concave. If you want to find the focal point, just find the point where you, there's no image. And then double that, you get the center. You get the radius of curvature. You can do this on any kind of a, like if you have a spoon at home, any kind of a curved mirror, you can find, you can move it, find a point where there's no image, that's the focal point. Double it, you get the center of the curvature. So now let's illustrate these. Okay, I'm gonna get a concave mirror. Okay. So let me act with the first case here. Uh, I am outside of the center of curvature and I am producing a real image that is inverted and that is diminished. It's smaller than me, okay? <clears throat> okay, now if I start walking towards, I'm gonna come to a point where the image is going to be roughly the same size as what I am, okay? Now that's kind of a little bit hard to know exactly what point, because it's hard, it's hard to measure that, but you kind of can see here, it's gonna be about, roughly about here, okay? So uh, now if I go inside of that, you are going, I'm gonna form an image that's larger than me, okay? So I'm gonna form a larger, you could tell there, it's starting to get bigger, okay? And if I go my face here, uh, you could see here, it's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, you see, if you look at, focus on my face, that face, it's a pretty scary face. Uh, it's larger than me and it's inverted. If I go back, let's see. If I could find out right about there, it's probably the same size as me, but inverted. So just simply from there, I can calculate the radius of curvature about here. So roughly speaking, about a hundred centimeters, about a meter is the radius of curvature, okay? So if I keep going, if I keep going, and now I'm going to hit a spot, no image is formed. If I go inside of that, big virtual image, okay? Therefore, you get this thing, you see? You form a big virtual image. So, I'm definitely forming a big virtual image here. And if I get closer, 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 the effect becomes like a plain mirror, like... I can look at myself, I'm regular, okay? But if I go a little bit farther, I get a magnified image, magnified, magnified, and right about here, no image. So if I get the distance here, right about here, okay? So the, it was about 60. So if I double that, that's 120. So just from ballpark measurements of this, the focal point is between roughly between about 50 to 60. And then if you double that, you get a 100 to 120 uh, is the center of the curvature. So that's the radius of the curvature. 